Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website and I will send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com, and this is a review of the Canon RF 100 to 500 millimeter f 4.5 to 7.1 LIS lens. That's right, this is a, it's not so massive for a 100 to 500, at least when it's compact like this. But let's take the lens hood off, attach it here, and then extend it, embiggen it from 100 to 500, and this is what you're left with. This is your 100 to 500. It is extending. It doesn't do the zooming internally. You have to turn the zoom ring and you end up with this type of thing. Now this lens weighs in at three pounds or for those who like grams, it's 1,365 grams. Now it does come with a lens collar. Now the reason I don't have the lens collar here is because the first thing I do is I take it off because you should not be needing to use a monopod with this lens. It will inhibit your shooting to such a degree that you're gonna end up missing the photos as you try to get them. Now, if you can't hold something that's three pounds like this and you need to use a monopod or a tripod because you're shooting some nature stuff, then of course, go ahead and use it. But for most people, you'll probably take off that lens collar and then never use it again until you sell the lens. Now, before I get too far into talking more about the lens, I did take it out to the Renaissance Fair and I had it on one of these two R6s it was this one over here because that one has the grip on it and that is the one that I used for the real world review. When we go over the sample images, you're gonna be able to download those and check for yourself how it did. Was the autofocus spot on? Does, do the colors look good? So kinda you can be like, yeah, I like the R6 in combination with this lens and we'll get to that with the sample images. But let's start with this lens hood right here. This is your lens hood. This door can flip out of the way so that if you have a polarizer, you can then go ahead and control it without having to take the lens hood off. This is something that companies have started to do in the not too distant past, and it is a welcomed thing if you are using these lenses with filters that need to be turned. Now let's take a look around the lens, starting down here near the mount. This is where the control ring is on this lens. A lot of the Canon lenses have the control ring all the way out on the outside, but in this case, it's down at the bottom and I never touch it. I don't set it to anything, but if you wanna set it to something, by all means, you go ahead and set it to something. We can turn the lens around here. We've got the limiter for limiting your focus. We've got the AF to manual, which I'm not sure how often you're gonna be switching to manual at this point. You've got your stabilization on and off, and you've got one, two, a three, different switches for your image stabilization. Remember when I did this to embiggen it? You see how easy that is to do? Well, does it creep? I'm a creep, yeah. Yep, it creeps to about 200, just below, it's about 180 millimeters is where it creeps to in this situation. So let's see, can it creep more? Now we're at 200, so it does creep slightly and you can just push it back just like that. But this lens has something that I've personally never seen before. There's something right here that says smooth and tighten. And no, when you turn it to smooth, Rob Thomas doesn't start playing with Santana because that song was overkill. That was funny, Steven. I heard you laugh. I thought you did, you thought that was funny. I hope you guys laughed as well. Hashtag, I laughed. Anyway, what does it do now that it's on tighten? It is harder to turn. Now, I'm not sure why you would like to turn it harder. Um, for me, unless you're really like working out, maybe that has something to do with it. Or maybe you don't want it to slip at all, that if you want it to be out at 500 at the whole time, then it's not gonna move. It's much harder, you're not accidentally gonna, gonna zoom it back. But in this case, yeah, I mean, it, it takes some force out at the end to, to go ahead and zoom it, but that's the difference. That's how you zoom it like this, tighten it, and that's how you zoom it like that. And the last ring on this lens that I didn't talk about is the manual focus ring, which is right here. I'm not sure why you would want a manual focus at any point, but hey, if that's what you wanna do, you can go ahead and do that. The lens cap, 77 millimeters. The filter thread, 77 millimeters as well for those of you who wanna put filters on it. I do not recommend putting UV filters on anything. That's just me, unless you're shooting 
paintball tournaments, then I would probably double bag it and put multiple filters on the end of it, just in case one gets hit by a paintball, you're not gonna ruin your lens. But that's an extreme circumstance right there. Let's jump into the photos from the Renaissance Fair. Like I said, we went out to the Renaissance Fair. This 100 to 500 came in major handy because a 70 to 200 just doesn't cut it when you're trying to photograph the joust or the horses running with the Knights of the Round Table, the Templar, or whatever the hell they're called out there at the Renaissance Fair. So moving into the first photo, I'm at 400 millimeters on this one. I'm at 1 1600th of a second. It's 6.3 ISO 800. Before I go too far, why would you be at ISO 800, Jared? Well, the reason is I'm at 6.3. Or if I zoom all the way out to 500, I'm gonna be at 7.1, and I know that I'm gonna be shooting subjects that are running, and I wanna freeze the motion, so that's why I'm at 800. 800 ISO, this camera can handle it. Now, continuous focus didn't matter for a photo like this because I used the lock-on tracking anyway to lock onto the subject. It focused on him, 400 millimeters, and at 6.3, the background is prevalent. You can still see it there because the subject is super far away and we're not able to compress it as much but if you were much closer to the subject, say, for example, this next photo, I'm closer to the horse. I'm zoomed in right on the eyeball, and it's gorgeous. Nice composition. We're at 472 millimeters, but look at how the background disappears because I'm focused on something closer, so that's how the background can still disappear. Just like when you use the 600 millimeter RF or the 800 millimeter F11 RF, I didn't think I'd be able to blow the background out, but you certainly can. Let me cut in here real quick because I wanna show you Fropac 1 and 2 in action on this photo. Now this is a wide angle that I'm like, I don't know where to start, but let me try some Skittles. Boom, one click of a button and Skittles just gave us this awesome look, but maybe you want it a little less, so you've got Universal Soldier, or something like Waffle House with no vignette. It depends on what you're looking for. Or, from this picture from the 100 to 500, let's start with, let's say, Bob Ross for people. Okay, that's Bob Ross for people, but regular Bob Ross, you're like, oh snap, that looks pretty good too. And Apollo, no white balance. It all depends on what you're looking for, but that's why we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack2. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you bundle Fropack 1 and 2 together, you can save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. Moving on, we now move in to some action shots. This one's at 238 millimeters, but this is where the combination of this RF lens on the R6 is really the test. Is it able to track the subject? Is the autofocus fast? I will tell you, the autofocus is so lightning fast that you don't even see it focusing because you never miss. You Well, I can't say never, because sometimes you will, but it just like, you don't hit the background and then miss and then be like, what's going on? It tracks the subject. The lock-on tracking, the IAF and face detect is what I stay on for just about everything that I shoot. And this lens was lightning quick, even on the R6, which means it's gonna be lightning quick on the R5 as well. Now keep in mind, this lens has dual nano motors in it, so both of them are working to go super fast, and it goes super fast. As we zoom in here on the subject, you can see that he's nice and sharp. Now we are at, what are we at? We are at five, F5, so of course you can still see this squire in the background going like, what's going on? He's back there, but he's slightly out of focus as we zoom in. And as we go to the next one, we get the next guy a little closer. We're at 500 millimeters. So basically what he's doing when he's riding, he's gonna hit this thing and then a chain's gonna flop around and try to hit him in the back and knock him off the horse. Now, normally we like to show you what's happening through our EVF. In this case, I can't use the electronic viewfinder if I attach a Atomos recorder to this because that blocks off my electronic viewfinder. So we had to use the GoPro on top. So you are seeing the GoPro angle of what is happening. Zooming in. Gorgeous, just really nice off of that camera. That camera and, and the lens combination is fantastic. Now, what's it look like at 100 millimeters? This is what it looks like. Everything is in focus at four or five because this guy is pretty close to the background. He's got the, the, the dog jumping through the hoop and 
it, you know, it tends to look more like a snapshot at four or five at 100 millimeters because we're not isolating the subject. This is where something like an 85-1.2 would totally come in handy or the 28 to 70 F2, which I also had in the bag, but I wanted to shoot with the longer lens. And that's why I left on the 100 to 500 for most of this shoot because I needed to reach out and grab those photos. And man, 100 to 500 is a sweet, sweet range. Um, same thing here, let's, let's zoom in on his face. So sharp on the eye and so sharp on that Raleigh fingers mustache. Um, but again, at F5, the background doesn't blow out. And this is where the 70 to 200 comes into play at 2.8 to help isolate the subject. Coming in even closer on these two performers, went with the black and white, filled the frame at 270 millimeters. Now we're at 5.6, but because I'm at a lower angle shooting up and there's trees in the background and I'm not getting that backdrop in, they now are separated from the background, but nice and sharp. Look at the eyeball. It's so nice and so sharp. I'm really happy with the files off of the R6 and I'm really happy with this lens for running and gunning to grab shots that I need, whether they're close or at a distance. Now, the biggest test at the Renaissance Fair every year for us, and it's always been trouble with some of the Canons like the 60 Mark II, is trying to be able to photograph the Royal Falconer. Wait, that wasn't very good. Hear ye, hear ye. Let's hear it for the Royal Falconer. Anyway, the Royal Falconer has falcons and other birds that I don't remember, and they're flying. So what modes did I use when trying to capture the birds? Well, lock on tracking. I went to Animal IAF, because that is a feature that is inside of the R6 and the R5, and a lot of people wanna know, can you track birds? Now, these aren't wild birds. That's gonna be a lot more difficult because you don't, it, it's not a controlled environment. This is pretty controlled because we know the bird's gonna go from point A to point B, fly right towards me. I thought it was gonna take a shit on my head. It did. But nonetheless, lock on tracking with Animal IAF in continuous focus. I did shoot with the mechanical shutter, and in some images, I did switch it over to the electronic shutter to give me the 20 frames per second because the birds are moving pretty fast. And in both modes, it did really well. Zooming in here, look how tight and focused it is on the eye. We have some separation from the background at 5.6 at 343 millimeters. We are basically edge to edge, not cropped at all. Download this raw file, you'll see how great it looks. Um, next up, same thing, zoom in on this, on this, oh, it just looks so good. Just the fact that you can rely on the autofocus of the camera, much like you can do with an A9 II in the Sony's. Well, the first time I ever used a Sony A9 to photograph uh, birds or eagles at Conowingo Dam, I was absolutely blown away that the bird could just swoop down fall out of frame, but the camera or the lens or both would still continue to focus. In this case, the Canon did a fantastic job. So if you're an R6 wanter, AKA somebody who wants an R6 to shoot nature in this combination, I don't think you can go wrong. I really don't. Um, but I love the isolation of the subject here at 343 millimeters. That looks fantastic. So it definitely passes the test when it comes to tracking fast moving subjects and using animal IAF. Let let me jump in here real quick and let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Now, if you're looking to build your very own online portfolio, use what I use and head on over to squarespace.com slash photo to get your 14 day free trial. If you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Now, let's get back to the video. So next, we moved back to the tournament where the joust was gonna happen on the field. And I wanna remind you that if you're gonna go from shooting animal IAF to then photographing people, do not forget to change that setting in the camera to go from animal to people because it will not focus as well with people. It will just search for the eye the whole time and not switch back into the face detect. So a lot of times you will see that you get face detect if you're from far away, but it still finds the face. As you get closer, it finds the eye. If you leave animal AF on, it's only going to try to find the eye and it won't switch back to the face. So here we go. I just love this shot because we got the one jouster hitting the shield right here. You've got all of this dust and sand flying off of it and it just looks really good. Oh, and because it's not a 2.8 or anything, it's a 5.6, you can kind of see what's going on in the background as well. 
Next, we've got the spear, what's it called? A joust, a spear, a lance, a lance. It's called a lance, Jared. The lance is breaking. I won't let you in on a little trick tip here though, but I think they designed it to break. Don't tell them that I told you that. It didn't break because they were good. It broke because it was meant to break. Steven, was I supposed to tell everybody that? Shh. Oh, geez, I'm sorry. I'm gonna be put into the royal jail by the queen, hopefully the queen. Anyway, look at that. Great focus. Look at the IAF on here. You cannot even see the eye and it hit it. No, I'm just kidding, it found the face, the head, the whatever, the, the, the shield, the mask that he's wearing, and it's perfect. Really happy with that shot. And then finally, at 100 millimeters at 4.5, we got this battle on the ground to the death. And by death, I mean nobody actually died out there. But you can see, how the background doesn't get blown out because it's at four or five, but it's sharp, it's fast, it is a fantastic lens. And it better be a fantastic lens for $2,699. That is an expensive lens. But if you are a professional and you need to be out there to reach out and grab images, like if you're shooting surfing, what else are you gonna use right now? You could adapt some older EF glass, you could do that, but 100 to 500 is a sweet, sweet range for nature photographers who are trying to get animals out and about, who are doing things similar to what I was doing here. If you're shooting sports, though keep in mind, the backgrounds won't be obliterated as much as a 2.8, but that's $2,700 versus say, $12,000, and those lenses don't even exist yet for the RF mount. Speaking of the RF mount, I gave Canon major props at the beginning for coming out with amazing RF glass, the 51 II, the 28 to 70 F2, the entire Hebrew Trinity, the other one twos, and now they're at the point where they need to come out with not the greatest glass ever, but really good RF glass that's more affordable because we don't have Sigma art lenses that we can buy on the RF mount just yet. Hopefully someday soon. A lot of people are picking up R6s. It's a more affordable option. I know that Canon knows this and I'm sure they're gonna come out with some of those more affordable F4 zoom lenses that a lot of people are gonna wanna pick up. But now it's time for the final two tests the wind tunnel test and the sniff test. Let's go with the wind tunnel test, Steven. Let's, uh, that was a sneak attack. God, it passed the sneak attack. What a really good lens. You know a lens is good when it can pass the sneak attack wind tunnel test. Sniff it. Mmm. Smells like a whispering eye. That is such a good smell, I really, that is one of the best smelling lenses ever, the whispering eye. Now don't forget you can download sample raw files to see for yourself if you like this lens, play with it from the R6. That's a good combination for you to check out. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Polin, Photo.com. See ya.